Solid Edge has some basic functionality to allow users to consider the way loads will deform objects in a very simplistic fashion. So it has static structural, which is basically an equilibrium trial. There's nothing dynamic about it. You can't consider uh, things with respect to time. Uh, and it also has a modal analysis, which allows some vibration uh, frequency uh, and that's the idea identify um, harmonic frequencies etc. We're not going to worry about uh, harmonic frequencies in these structures, we're just going to care about static structural loading. Um, the challenge that I'm setting you is to optimize a bracket to support a weight of 10 or mass of 10 kilograms under the action of gravity from one particular hole here mounted on two bearing pins here and here. Now when we do that, that's going to create a non-uniform load across the material um, and that's going to set up some stresses. Now this is quite important. For you to try and minimize the mass of your bracket across this material with respect to uh, still being able to support this load acting straight down here, you're going to need some sort of tool to allow you to visualize where this load creates stress, how it loads the material up. And then maybe you can do something to the shape of this bracket to reduce the overall mass without causing it to fail. So to do this, we need to consider how stress can be simulated and what stress is. Simplistically, stress is measured in uh, units of pressure, pascals or newtons per meter squared. Um, most materials, resistant materials, have got um, numerically very large stress resistance capability. So we're talking about megapascals, as you can see here. So millions of newtons per meter squared. And in this case, uh, acrylic. Um, in the file that I've given you, I've set the material to be acrylic. We are going to use acrylic in the practical part of the experiment. Uh, this has got, uh, in this case, when I show you this experiment, a uh, stress indicated of 682,000 newtons per meter squared. Um, I'll come on to the uh, yield strength or the failure strength, if you like, of acrylic later on. Okay, so first up, we should consider the most basic way uh, in which a material could be stressed by a load. So what I've done is I've created a model in Solid Edge where I've glued one side of a bracket to a wall which can't move and I've applied a uniform force. So it's like another glued force if you like, a piece of uh, like a car pulling on it from one side glued to this edge in a uniform manner all the way along. That's going to stretch this material across this way. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play the result. What you can see here is a graphical representation of the way in which the stress is distributed across the material normal to the direction of a force applied. So the force is applied in the x direction in this case. So what we're getting here is a graphical representation of lots and lots of slices going up and down across here in cells and we're getting to look across them to see how that stress is developed across the material. And we can see where it's at a maximum uh, around these holes at the top and the bottom. Okay, so that's quite simplistic. Another thing to look at is to notice that the uh, maximum stress level is 682,000 newtons per meter squared and interestingly we've got a negative value in the purple, okay, it was quite small, so that's that's an interesting start. Fine. So that's the way in which this material is getting stretched. But when we hang our weight, we're going to do something a bit different to that. So let's consider another way in which stress could be applied to a material. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a model to produce pure shear stress. So what I've done is I've now glued my material down here on my left in a uniform fashion. All this edge here is just glued to a wall that cannot move. And then I've glued a mass, a weight if you like, directly to the other side acting downwards. So this is uniform, it's the same amount per unit area 
all the way down this edge. And so it's going to uh, apply pure shear to the material straight down on one side, and of course it can't move on the other side. So the result is going to be pure shear stress. Now I'm going to try and time this so that we get to see both of them playing at the same time. Now you can see here that the way in which the stress is developing across these two um, simulations is very, very different. First up, let's look at the maximum amount of stress developed. You can see in the shear stress scenario, the stress created is only 387,000 newtons per meter squared. You're talking about something like, well, just a little bit over half that uh, under the pure normal stress mode. So that's quite odd. Um, not only that, you can see that the patterns being developed are spatially very different. So what are we looking at here? Well, we're looking at a single 2D representation of the stress being developed across the XZ plane. So the XZ plane in this case is the plane you can uh, see on your screen. It's, it's parallel to the screen surface. Uh, whereas this uh, plane is actually normal to the screen surface. Uh, and yet you can just see a stack of them, if you like, running across the screen in this case. Okay, so this is quite interesting. It's also quite baffling. So we don't know if we are considering the maximum amount of stress developed by either one of these forces in this case. It could be that when you go and hang your weight from this point down here, that you create some sort of combination of uh, normal stress and shear stress at any given um, spatial area here, it could be there, it could be uh, down here, it could be up here, it could be there, it could be anywhere. So we need to have some sort of way of working out whether or not we are getting a good idea of the total load or maximum stress that we are delivering from a load at any given uh, area in our material. And that brings me on to the next modelling technique. It's called von Mises stress. Um, in this case, what I've done is I've slightly changed the way in which I'm fixing the material. Um, I've used something called a pin. So one pin here and one pin here. A pin holds the, um, the location in three dimensions, X, Y, and Z, but it does not prevent this here from being able to rotate around it. So that's quite interesting. We're simulating a bearing at this location and this location. I've then simulated a, a hung mass, a hung weight, here, straight down, simulated a 10 kilograms, or 98.1 newtons. Okay, so with that, what I can immediately see is that I've got a maximum uh, stress being developed of 1,900,000 newtons per meter squared, significantly higher than either of these two. So let's just try and get this playing uh, at the same time. Oh, it's not bad. Okay, so what you can see here is that, again, we've got a different representation. Also, spatially, you can notice that there are some heat or some hot points, if you like, some areas where we're getting more stress development. What are we actually seeing here? We are seeing a scalar representation of stress development. For any given point on this shape, the stress um, could be acting in any given direction. So there's no directional information here. We're not limited with a von Mises stress just to looking in the XZ plane or the XY plane or the YZ plane. It could be in any direction um, across any of those as well. And we get a good idea of the maximum uh, amount of stress being developed across the material from the hung weight. Why is this useful? Well, we could compare it to the yield stress. So you can see the yield stress in the bottom here is being rated at 37.9 um, megapascals or 37,900,000 newtons per meter squared. That is nothing to do with the modeling. That is a material constant of acrylic. Um, if any of these areas were to exceed that on our model, then we would have a problem. We would probably cause the acrylic to fail. In this case, the maximum possible value is 1.9 megapascals, we're significantly beneath our maximum potential value, and therefore we can see that overall this would be a very, very safe device to carry a 10 kilogram weight. So with that, I think I've given you um, a good overview of an intuitive tool for visualizing stress development, uh, which combines both normal stress 
and shear stress in one easy to see environment. As you go through a degree program in engineering, uh, you will gain a um, more and more in-depth understanding of the way in which stress can be analyzed and treated. Von Mice is a very useful one. Uh, I think it's useful for this particular uh, technique. Hopefully you can see from some of the patterns which are being developed on the far right video an opportunity already.